Hello, everybody. Um, welcome again to uh, Shields Live. It is Wednesday, um, the 20th, April 20th. Yeah, April 20th. So, uh, again, thanks for joining us uh, on this, once again, Iowa crummy day. It's just kind of rainy and overcast and chilly. And, you know, hopefully, eventually we'll uh, but. get, but, but, you know, part of the project today will, you know, it's supposed to bring the May flowers. So we'll see if that really comes out. But, um, Again, uh, just appreciate you guys coming and joining us um, every Wednesday, as always. Like, comment, and uh, share. We greatly appreciate it. I will uh, start off by saying next week, we will be off next week. I'll be out of town, and uh, Jan has some things that she has to do as well. So we'll take next week off, but we'll be back the following week. So, um, but yeah, again, thanks for joining us. I will pass it over to Jan and see you in a little bit. Catch Thank you later. You. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay, so we're we're I just wanted to do something for fun this week. And I thought I was thinking about all this rain we've been having and all this. Just like I gotta get the comments up here. And uh hello everybody. <laughs> These people are coming through. Um, so we've been having all this rain and everything, and I had and I had this little design I digitized oh a very long time ago. And I redid it a little bit. And April showers bring May flowers. So I just thought this would be a fun little project. And I also wanted to do just some basic embroidery. So I have a lot of new people that watch the videos and they're they're um, unsure about stabilizers and how to hoop things and stuff. So we're just gonna do a simple project, this little design. Now this design, is up on the Facebook page. There's a link to it and you can have this design for free. This is one that I digitized. And so um, this design is up on the post. That will be the video. And it's if you can just click on the link, it'll take you to Dropbox and then you can download this design for free. Okay, so April showers bring May flowers. All right, so we're gonna just do some basic embroidery today. And um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about stabilizer and we're going to hoop and I'm going to talk about, we talked about bobbin cases and bobbin threads. So we'll do that again this week. Just so this, I just call it embroidery 101. And I just thought everybody needed a free design. So, and I was trying to think spring. <laughs> okay. So let me go ahead and, and switch the camera over here. And we will, uh, we'll talk about hooping first. Okay. So this is a little tea towel. Um, just a, just a little plain tea towel. And um, I did some preparation to it. So the second hand, let me switch the camera and we'll look at the, what we did here. All right. So you're going to see my table here in a minute. Let me switch my microphone over. All right. So you should be seeing my table here with the my towel on it. Hi, everybody. People are coming in and say something. Yeah, make sure you comment. So I, I get to see your comments on on this uh, on Shields Live because everything comes through because it's a business page. So it's so cool. I get to see your names on on Facebook. So or on the the Streamyard. All right. So I have taken my towel. So this is just my little tea towel, and I ironed it nicely. And what I did is I folded it and again I have done different ways of hooping these so this is going to be a basic hooping okay so we're not going to do some a more advanced hooping we'll do that some other time but I just wanted to show everybody some basic hooping skills okay so you, we want to get this cute little design centered on the towel you know this way and I want it up about six inches from the bottom so the center of it I should say so what I did is I took my towel and I folded it in half, the, the long way here, okay? Folded it in half, and I just put a nice press in there so I could see where the center was. So I just pressed it with my iron, okay? And then I folded it up from the bottom six inches because I want my center to be about six inches from the bottom of the towel. So I just folded it up, and I put it, a nice press on it there. So that way, and it doesn't matter which way you fold it for this, this um, hooping method. I folded it with the right sides together, but you don't have to. Okay, so here is my towel then. So I know where my center of my design is going to be, okay? And like I said, there's different ways to do this. Um, this is just a real basic, um, this design is, doesn't have a lot of stitches. So this basic method works really well for um, hooping. 
okay? And this is a tea towel. So normally, if, if, as a general rule, when you use stretchy fabrics, you're gonna use cutaway stabilizers. And when you use woven fabrics, like this tea towel is a cotton towel, you would use a tearaway. So we are gonna use a piece of tearaway today, okay? So I have my mark, you can see the lines here, okay? Where my center of my design is gonna be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this down, hopefully. I'm trying to hoop over a camera, so excuse me if I fumble here a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this down on my piece of stabilizer and I'm gonna to try to get it roughly centered on the stabilizer, okay? Just gonna lay it down on top and I can see the stabilizer through my through my towel and just get it kind of roughly centered. I think I need to come down this way a little bit like that. That looks better, okay? So I got my stabilizer roughly centered there. And then on these hoops, there is an arrow, okay? That's right here. I don't know if you can see it very well. There's an arrow. That is the top of the hoop, just so you know, okay? So make sure you put that at the top of the hoop because there's also an arrow on this part. So here's the arrow on the top of, the, of this part, the outside part, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the center little... I'm gonna use these little marks here. That's where the, the centering grids go. I'm not gonna use the grid today. I'm gonna to use this as a rough centering and then I'll finish it in the machine. But you can see these marks right here, okay? I'm gonna lay those marks down on my creases on my towel, okay? With the top of the hoops up here, okay? So I'm just gonna lay that down and kind of get it roughly centered. Now, what I do, so I make sure that the bottom part of my hoop is loose enough, okay? I'm just gonna grab a hold of this and the stabilizer, put my thumbs right on the center marks and I'm just gonna slip this over and lay it into the bottom part of the hoop. Now I'm a little bit crooked here, okay? And I'm gonna, I make sure that my bottom part of my hoop is fairly loose so that it will just drop right in. And, and everything looks pretty good. See, I'm just a little bit off here. I'm just going to pull this over just a little bit. I'm just a little bit. There we go. It slipped a little bit on me. I do not pull on the towel. That is one of the tricks. You do not want to pull on your towel because if you pull on the towel, it's going to, it's going to, um, it's going to pull back when you take it out of the hoop and then you're going to have puckers. Now, this, again, is a basic hooping technique for centering something on a towel. Um, I often use some sort, if I have a design that is a lot more stitches, I actually use a either a tacky tearaway stabilizer on my towel, or I use, um, I fuse something to the back of the towel. Um, and you have to kind of go by how many stitches you have. And so we're going to look at that. This is not a very de dense design. It's partially applique. So we're going to um, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. I'm going to add another piece of stabilizer because it's got quite a few stitches in it. Okay. So does everybody did everybody understand what I how I hoop that? I made my marks with my iron here. Okay. I laid it down on the paper or on the stabilizer, the tearaway stabilizer. Then I just picked everything up and dropped it down into the base part. I, I kept it centered by using the marks right here, like this, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten my hoop. This is a very simple, basic um, hooping technique because I do towels like this quite often, okay? So there's my hooped towel. So what do you think? Does it look pretty good? I think it looks pretty straight. All right. I'm going to make sure that my hoop's nice and snug. So I'm going to snug it up a little bit. And also just make sure that the that the corners of your hoop are pushed down, that they're not sticking up, and then, then you won't have so much trouble with your hoop popping open or anything. This is a five by seven hoop. Um, this design fits in a five by seven. So I use, and you also want to use a hoop um, that is um, as close to the size of your design as possible. So use the, the, usually I use the smallest hoop that I possibly can because then it keeps it the most stable so that 
that everything stays nice and neat and flat. Okay. So this is the what we're going to be doing. So I've got this in the hoop now. Oh, hi, Judy. So here is the little towel. Okay. And you can see it's very neat and it's not puckered. Okay. And this is how I hooped it. So I'm going to show you a couple little tricks with that too when we get to the end of it. All right. So there's my little towel. All done. All right. So we're hooped. Does anybody have any questions about the hoops? Uh, no. The waffle weave towels are actually still cotton, Marcia. So I would not use a no-show mesh because then it stays on the back. I like to take most of the stabilizer off, so I'll show you the back of this. I don't want any stabilizer on the back of it any more than I have to have. So this, this is the back. So you can see there's not a whole lot of stabilizer left on it. Okay. So no, I would not use a cutaway on waffle weaves because they are actually cotton. Mm -hmm. And they don't stretch much. Okay. All right. So we have hooped our towel. Does that make sense to everybody how we did that? All right, so, and we know what we're going to make. So if you give me just a second, I'm going to turn the camera around here because then we're going to start talking about machines. We talked about our tearaway stabilizer. I have to, a second here, my table goes down. <laughs> so I need to bring my table down a little bit. It's a little too tall for me to sew on. Okay, so does everybody remember what I, um, what I said about stabilizers? Normally when it does not stretch cotton fabrics, we're going to use tearaway. If you are using a, like a t-shirt, then we're going to use a cutaway that's for stretchy fabrics. And that's a general, a general rule. Okay. So it's easy for me to remember that. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring this camera over here. Let's talk about the machine a little bit. So we're going to bring our design up. Now this design, like I said, is up on the Facebook page and it's free to you. Um, I also, for those of you that saw the scan and cut class a couple of weeks ago, where we cut from the PES file, I changed the color of the, the, the placement line in my software to the um, applique material. So if you do want to cut out this little applique that we're going to make on your scan and cut, I already have it set up. So it should just read it right in the machine. So if you just put it on a stick and put it in your scan and cut, it should work. Okay. We're going to go to embroidery edit. I've got it on my stick here already. I'm going to hit my little USB. And this is my 5200 that we're sewing on today. Okay. And here's my little design. It's my April showers design. Okay. We're going to set it. And if I needed to do anything else to it, like add um, lettering or anything else, this is where I would do that on the this editing page. But I'm happy with it the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and embroidery. And at this point, I did set the colors in the software um, for this, the, the colors that I used. So um, not every um, uh, not every embroidered design is like that. Often the embroidered designs you purchase from any place, the colors are not going to be set. They're just going to have color stops. Now I did set this so they should come up right on the machine with the colors I used. So I used a silver. And these are the brother colors. I used um, uh, cream, cream brown, I think it was. Yeah, cream brown, it's kind of a yellow. And then um, a lime green and a light blue, okay? These two right here are going to be the ones for the applique. So I'm gonna use the yellow for those two, okay? Why are you in embroidery edit? Okay, so that, that's a very good question, Carol. Okay, so when you use, okay, so let's look at this. Not all of the machines have this anymore. The older machines, and my machine still has not been redone, they had embroidery and embroidery edit. If you just choose embroidery on one of the machines that has both things, you have blue, see how the buttons are blue? If I touch this USB and I go find my design here, it goes directly to embroidery. There is no editing abilities. I can't edit anything. I can't change the size. I can't rotate it, everything. There's a little bit of stuff here, but you notice there was a whole page missing. So almost, I would say 99% of the time on this machine, 
since it has embroidery edit and all the older machines had that, I use embroidery edit because then I can do other things if I need to, like add designs and all that. So this gives me more options because it has an editing screen. And you notice then that the buttons are kind of yellow. So if you have this ability to use embroidery, the newer machines just have a button that says embroidery. So then you get all the editing stuff with it. But the older ones had two options. So definitely use embroidery edit if you have embroidery edit on your machine, because then you have all of the options to available to you that if you need to do something else to your design. So I'm going to go get it. I'm going to set it now. Now see this whole screen did not come up on embroidery. Okay. I then this way I could rotate, I could change colors, I could duplicate, but that that the screen didn't come up on embroidery only. Now I'm going to hit embroidery and it's going to take me to the final screen. So yeah, so if you have that, if you have two of them on your machine, use embroidery edit because then it gives you all your options every time you bring up a design, okay? And then the newer ones like my Luminaire only has embroidery. And but all of the editing features are there. Okay? So I have one older machine and one newer machine. Okay, so now we have our design up. We know what colors we're gonna use. Um, we're gonna talk next about, remember we talked last week about um, thread and um, bobbin thread and the type of bobbin cases we use. Okay, so we're gonna be doing embroidery on this machine, right? Sorry, my camera decided it's gonna be, there we go. It's gonna be blurry, there it goes. Um, so I am going to use a pre-wound embroidery bobbin. I like my pre-wound bobbins, so I'm going to use one of my NEV pre-wound embroidery bobbins. So that means I need to have my embroidery bobbin case in, the one with the dot in the center. So I'm going to remove this plate because I've been sewing with my machine. I'm going to take my, my other bobbin case out, my one that I use for sewing. I'm going to put that up here on the top. And I'm going to take my one with the blue dot and put it into the machine because we're going to be embroidering today. All right, then I'm going to put that gray plastic piece back on. I'm going to load my bobbin. Okay, now this is a bobbin that is one of those skinnier ones and you can also use the post. Remember we talked about that little post last week. I, I choose not to use the post so I have to be a little more careful when I get to towards the end of the bobbin. I need to remove it because most of the time my, my uh, bobbin sensor doesn't function quite right because it's skinny. Okay, so if you want your bobbin sensor to function correctly, put the little post underneath. I forgot to get it out. I was going to put it in, but I forgot to get it out today. Okay, so I have the correct bobbin case and the, my bobbin embroidery bobbin thread, my pre-wound in my machine. Second time I'm going to lay my towel back here. Okay. Now I'm ready to hoop. I've got my, my towel on the hoop, so I'm going to lay this in here. Now be careful when you go to put this in that you get this. You don't get the towel underneath, you know, because we've all done that, right? We've sewn the towel into the hoop, you know, I've, we've all done that. So just be careful when you put it in. Slide it in and then make sure that the rest of the towel is laying back here on the table and not under your hoop. Because Jan has done that many times. Now, you might notice, and you can see with your needle, I'm going to show you. I'm going to do a little bit of fine tuning with my my um, centering. I know with it's hard to explain, but the actual center of the hoop is slightly to the left of where these little lines are right here, and that's just the way the hoop works. So I always usually have to do just a teeny bit of adjustment, okay? So you can do that a couple different ways. I'm going to take these little buttons over here, okay? You can see I've got my little buttons. These are my little moving buttons. And before I start anything, I'm going to move my design over to, I need to move this way a little bit. And I think maybe up a little bit so that I'm right in the center where I wanted it, okay? Now, for those of you who have a machine without any laser lights or anything, how I do, I've done this for years, I take the thread out of the, the needle 
And I just drop my needle to see if it's right where I want it in the center. That is a very easy centering method. I use the little move buttons to move the design slightly. I'm happy with that, raise the needle. If you have a laser light, and a lot of you do. Now this machine doesn't come with the laser light foot, but you can get it. And I bought, bought one right away because I really like the laser light because it helps. So I'm gonna, this one doesn't have any other centering features on it, but the laser light. So to turn it on somewhere on your screen, some of them are up, whoop, sorry, I just threaded the needle. <laughs> just a second here. Um, I just touched my needle threader by accident. Um, depending on which machine you have, there'll be a button that looks like a foot, a W foot, and that turns on the laser light. Now mine, most of them are up here on this side and it has it here, but mine actually to turn the laser light on, it's down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna touch this button and it turns on my laser light. So if you give me a second here, I'm going to bring this back over here. And now you can see, oh, hopefully you can see my little, can you see my little red laser light? Let's see if I can get my camera to clear up. Sometimes it doesn't like to clear up right away when you move it. Come on. Come on. It will eventually. I'm sorry, guys. Sometimes it just takes a minute for it to focus. It's getting worse, isn't it? Holy cow. Let's see if I can get it. Stop being blurry. It's focusing on something really close to me. There it goes. Okay. Usually if I just wave my hand. So do you can see the little red dot? That's my laser light. So see, I don't have to use my needle then because I can see that's just exactly where I want it to be. If I moved it back over, you could see it. You see the little laser light? Okay. And I can use my little arrow buttons to move my design to be exactly centered. So you often do need to do a slight little bit of centering when you're using either a grid or just the lines on the hoop, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rethread my machine. I think it looks like it's well centered where we want it. Now I'm also going to look at the number of stitches I have on this machine, on this design. This design is about 10,000 stitches. So one piece, just so you know, in a five by seven hoop, one piece of tearaway stabilizer holds about six or 7,000 stitches. Well, obviously then one piece of stabilizer isn't quite enough, is it? Because it's only 7,000 and this says it's 10,000 stitches. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you another technique. This is called floating. I'm just going to take another piece of tearaway that's as you know big as my at my embroidery area and I just kind of cut a piece. It's one of my pre-cut little eight by eights. I'm just going to pick this hoop up and I'm going to slide it underneath, whoops, slide it underneath the hoop here. And that will add another six or 7,000 stitches um, worth of stabilizer. And it's just going to, when it starts sewing, it's just going to pick it up and start taking it with it. Okay. So that is a, a good way I, I usually just like to hoop one piece of stabilizer with the product and then I can I can float up to two pieces underneath. So I often float stuff underneath and it just really helps with keeping everything nice and flat. So I've got my my stabilizer enough for 14,000 stitches so we're we're awesome there. And now we're ready for embroidery. So the I've got my first color in. I'm going to start with the silver. It's going to do the little um, it's going to do the little stick on the, in, the umbrella, like the little handle part, the silver part. Okay. And for some reason, my machine did not des decided not to cut. I don't know why. Normally, this one cuts, but it decided not to today. It evidently wanted to talk to see, show everybody that it likes to act up every now and then. Okay, so there's the little the little handle of the umbrella. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this. For some reason, it didn't want to cut it. So we'll just cut it. Sometimes when I save things in the brother software, it doesn't, it, it takes some of the cuts out. 
So it's something to do with a computer thing that I, I can't really explain. <laughs> so I did save this in the brother software so that you could use the scanning cut. Okay, so I've got this done. So now we're ready. We're going to talk about applique. This is another basic embroidery skill is applique. Now applique has three pieces, three parts. The first part is going to be a placement line that's going to show us where to put our fabric. Okay. The second part is going to be a tack down line that's going to, we're, we'll, we'll have laid down a piece of fabric here and it's going to tack it down to our hoop. And then we're going to trim it in the hoop. Okay. And then the third piece of the applique is going to be the covering stitches, which in this case are satin stitches. Okay. So I wanted to talk to you about my little appliques. So I wanted this to be an umbrella. Let me show you a little product that's kind of fun. I wanted to show you, so you, can you see my umbrella? It's kind of, kind of shiny, my fabric. Okay, so I took a piece of this, this polka dot fabric. This is just plain fabric. And I put a product on it called Vinyl Fuse. And you just fuse it to the top of the fabric and makes it look like an umbrella. I just thought it was kind of cute. So this stuff's called, it's called Vinyl Fuse. And it's just a product that you iron on to the top and then it makes it waterproof. So I just thought it was cute. I just wanted to make it something different. Okay, so that, this is, it's Pellon is the, is the company that does this. So, but this is Vinyl Fuse. So we're gonna use the one with the Vinyl Fuse and you can just use regular fabric if you wanted to. This also washes quite well. So if you need to wash the towel, this will wash fine. So I'm gonna use that on mine just to make it look like shiny umbrella. Okay, so the first step of our applique is next. I'm gonna put my foot down and I'm gonna sew out the placement line. Oops, helps Jan, you know, if you thread your machine. I do this all the time, guys. You're supposed to be watching me. I forget to thread my machine. Isn't that the funniest thing? I use a multiple needle a lot, so I don't have to thread it every time. <laughs> Okay, so we'll, we'll try that again. Now we're gonna do our placement line. I'm gonna get my piece of fabric that I have my vinyl fuse already on. And it tells you on the box how to do it. You just iron it on, there's like a coating paper and you iron it on and then you pull the paper off. It's, it's just really easy, so, okay. So here is my placement line. If you cut this piece out, you could also cut this out in advance from the PES file, if you have a scanning cut, you could cut this out. And at this point, there would also be um, heat and bond on the back and you would put this in here. But I like to show everybody how to cut their, their um, appliques in the hoop because it, that's probably the most basic method. So we got our placement line. I'm gonna place my fabric over the placement line, make sure everything's covered, okay? And, I'm going to stitch the second part of the applique, which is the tack down line. So it's gonna tack it down to the fabric. I thought about this this weekend. I thought, you know what? Everybody needs a free design this week. And I just thought it was a cute, it was something I'd done a long time ago and I haven't used it for a long time and I thought, well, we're just gonna have a free design this week. Okay, so there is my placement line and my tack down line. So I've tacked it down. So now I'm going to take this, I'm not gonna remove this from the hoop, but I'm gonna take it out of the machine and I'm gonna trim and I apologize for my scissors. <laughs> I have new scissors ordered. These are getting very dull. So I'm going to pull up a little bit and I'm gonna trim this close to the stitches. These are excellent scissors. If you don't have a pair of these for embroidery, these are Ginger. These are up on the website too, shieldsewingcenter.com. These are six inch double curved embroidery scissors and they, are, they have nice sharp points so you can get in and get close to these stitches. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to, oops here, trim all the way around this, close to the stitches. And I'm kind of holding up on the, on the extra piece so that it's, I can get pretty close. Now there is gonna be a nice covering stitch on here. So you, if you're not super, super duper close, it's okay. But some, some digitizers um, have wider 
um, satin stitches than others. So you do have to get pretty close. Okay. So there is my trimmed applique. Okay, ready for the satin stitches. So the third part of the applique procedure is the satin stitching. Now, the other thing that I have added to this, so while this is going to take a couple minutes to do, the other part that I've added to this is a little bit of detail on the inside of the umbrella. So there's, these little lines are going to sew first. So you can see those are sewing first because I wanted those underneath um, the satin stitches that goes around the edge. And I'm still using the same color of thread. Now, did you notice that I've got my thread up? So I'm going to pull this up while this is sewing for a minute. Most of the machines you can get a thread stand for, and this is another embroidery 101. It's very important. Um, these thread spools, as you can see, hold this up a little closer, don't have a cap on one end, do they? Okay. They don't have a cap on one end. They're really meant to be standing upright. All right. I like to... Um, I like to stand these up on a thread stand all the time. And in fact, I use almost every thread that I have using a thread stand. Um, I hardly ever lay one down. There is going to be an exception with the next color because I have a little bit of a problem with this thread spool and I'll show you why I'm going to lay it down. Um, but I would highly recommend a thread stand and has the little pole. You can't quite see it. There's the little pole. So it goes up over there. So almost all the machines that embroider have one of these available. If they don't, you can also get the little round faced ones that set next to your machine and coming up, up and over. So these just, these um, thread spools basically really need to be standing upright. Okay, so if you're using threads like this, so the Floriani, the Brother thread, these really need to be standing upright, okay? So I have noticed that um, I may have to, to redo the design and re-upload it right after class. So if you've already downloaded it, you might want to go back. Give me an hour. Um, it's not trimming quite as well. So every now and then when I go into the Brother software to do something, um, it doesn't want to trim the same way. It doesn't read the, the jump clips is what I'm trying to say. So I noticed that this one didn't, um, didn't trim either. So I may actually go in and and resave the design one more time <laughs> to see if i can get the, the the jump clips to come back in for you so you don't have to clip and i only i only notice it when i use the brother software but i had to use that to get the color in there for the scanning cut so that might have caused the jump clip to be weird okay so we're working on the satin stitches here Anybody have any questions? Is this making sense to everybody? Everybody knows what um, bobbin thread and bobbin case I'm using. Oops, so here, I'm gonna stop this just a second. I got a great big piece of thread in there. I don't wanna sew it in. Sometimes I sew stuff in and then I'm like, oh no. I have a cat, so and I have lots of fabric in my at home, and so I've always got. Seems like I always have threads everywhere. So yeah, the I wonder if when I open this up in the brother software, if that made the jumps the the jump clips not meet correctly. So I don't know. That's weird. I have didn't I hadn't sewn it. I thought I sewed it off of this one though. I don't think I have mine turned off. I'll check it. So it's just about around. Staying nice and flat because I've got enough stabilizer in there. And that is very important. So when you're looking at what you're doing for um, stabilizer, make sure you look at the number of stitches that your design has in it because that is a very important thing to look at. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and change the color. And I'm going to use, what happened to my green thread? There it is. We're going to put a green handle on the umbrella. 
So we can watch our time. All right. We're gonna put our little handle on the umbrella here. Yes, I changed the, the bobbin case, Carol, for my pre-wound, because when you use pre-wounds, remember, you want to use that tighter bobbin case. If you are winding your own brother bobbin thread, you can just use your regular bobbin case and your regular bobbins. That's fine. I, I embroider an awful lot, so I use pre-wounds most of the time. So I have to change the bobbin cases in both my machines. All right, so there's our little handle. All right, and now we're gonna do the spool that I told you I had a problem with. So these little spools, I love these, this brother thread. And I've had, I've been using this for years and years and I love it, but um, these little, um, these have the little things that pull down so you can put your thread in here, you know, like so you, so you can keep them from unrolling all over the place. So you just, you know, pull this down on the bottom and then you just stick this into the little crease, maybe, and then snap it shut. Okay, well, every now and then I'll get one of these spools that doesn't snap shut anymore and it stays open. So it is very important that when you put it up on your thread stand that the bottom is snapped shut because if you don't, snap it shut. There is a crevice right here. Okay. You can see this one has a crevice, right? This one won't stay shut anymore. So if I go like this, it just pops right back open again. Okay. So you can see it's almost empty. So what I do with these then, and if you don't have a thread stand, you can do this um, and it will work fine, is you can put these, these threads and the brother Bob, the brother threads work better this way than the Floriani's. They, the Floriani's will work this way. They're a little longer though. These are a little shorter spool. But anytime I have one of these that stays open like this, I don't want to catch my thread under that crevice. So I lay it down on the spool pin. And technically this is backwards because it's coming over the top of the spool. It's supposed to be coming under it but these have to be over. So I'm gonna lay it on the spool with the big end over here on the right. And then I'm just gonna thread it and I'm not going to put a cap on it. If you put a cap on this, I can guarantee you you'll break a needle within minutes. So the reason I'm doing this one this way is because that, that bottom is open. Normally I would stand it up, but with that bottom open, it's gonna catch and it would probably break a needle for you in the class. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it down. But if you only have this available to you and no, and no thread stand, this is the way you should be putting your thread with no cap. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and this is the raindrops for the little, for the little design. So we're going to do the raindrops. We'll see if it cuts for these. If it doesn't, then I'll go fix the design for you, okay? Sometimes that happens if you, I made this design um, originally in the Brother software years ago. And, but it's an older software. No, it's gonna cut. Yeah, I don't know why I just didn't cut the one thing. Hmm, that's weird. So hopefully it'll be okay. I don't think it'll be too annoying to you. It cut, it cut in between. But um, sometimes when I make these, like I made the original design in PE design, but then I, I did some alteration to it this weekend in the Dime software. And so sometimes it changes the cutting is the only thing I ever noticed. It's just a goofy thing. It's a computer thing I don't understand. But this is working fine because it's cutting. The only thing it didn't cut was up here. It didn't cut this one of these little threads in here, but it was it, it was not that much out of the way. So I think I'll just leave the design alone. It's fine. All right, so we're gonna do the raindrops. Are there any other questions? When do you use threads with a cap? Okay, the only time I lay threads down, Carol. Um, 
if you're embroidering, most of the embroidery threads have no cap on one end. Okay, so that, that one needs no cap. The only other thread that I actually lay down in my machine is monofilament. And then I put a, a cap that's larger than the spool. You want your caps to be bigger than the spool so that they go out past the spool, okay? So like mine, I have to put the large cap on. That's when I use a spool cap. Um, I very rarely put anything down on this, on this spool other than that monofilament, everything else, even the regular like Mettler threads that I use for sewing, they all stand up on the thread stand. I hardly ever lay anything down, but the monofilament for some reason likes to lay down. It, it comes off the spool a little bit. It's a little wiry, you know, it's a little stiffer and it comes off the spool better and works better this way. So I, I usually down here, I have spool caps down, I store down here and I put bobbins on it. That's what I use my school pin for, is to store extra bobbins. All right, so we're getting our little raindrops. There's our little raindrops. Now the last step is going to take a few minutes. So maybe Tim will be coming back pretty soon. And we'll we'll be he can talk for a minute. We'll get this started and then he can talk for a minute and then you'll be able to see it all finished at the end. So this is the lettering that I added at the end, the April showers bring May flowers. I'm gonna do some orange thread. I wanted it to be very bright. I need some bright sunshine. We're not getting much lately, are we? And I remembered I had this little design. I made it probably 10 years ago. And I thought this would be cute, but we need some letters for it. So, and we'll talk a little bit while this is sewing. The letters so it's getting started here but i do want to show you a little bit about how i finished it i'm sure none of my towel is stuck hopefully <laughs> that would be good wouldn't it all right so let's talk a little bit about the towel well this is something pull this up all right so here's my finished towel you can see that it's quite flat it doesn't look puckery all right so what i did once i took it out of the hoop I turned it over and I removed as much of the tearaway stabilizer as I could. So you can see most of it's out. I took it out of the applique in the center. You know, there's a little bit in there, maybe in the leathers. And if I'd worked at it a little harder, I could have probably gotten a little bit more out, all right? Then I wanted to press it a little bit. Now the trick is when you press your embroidery, don't press on the embroidery. All right, press around it. So what I did is I just pressed my towel, put it, and I like to press from the back. So I laid it down on my wool pressing mat, and those work really well, by the way, and we have those on the website too, these wool pressing mats. And I just pressed around, not on the design, I pressed around it. And then it made it nice, nice and neat looking. And then I got it all done and I took a picture of it and I thought, well, gosh, it just needs a little something. I just couldn't decide. It just needed a little something. It's just a plain towel, you know, it was just a plain white towel. There was nothing on it. So I thought, you know what? It just needs a little rickrack. So I took a little bit of rickrack and just put it up about an inch or so from the bottom and just stitched across the rickrack and added a little rickrack to it. Don't you think that just set it off? And I, I matched the... I matched the handle on the umbrella. So I thought that looked a lot better with a little rickrack, a little ribbon on there. You could do a little fabric piece, anything you wanted. It just gave it a little bit of color. Okay, so we're, we're getting getting through on April showers. Now, are there questions about how to finish the embroidery? Remember, don't, don't, um, don't iron on your embroidery because it will certainly be puckered then, okay? What kind of towel is that? Oh, yeah, um, actually, well, I'll, and actually I've got the package over here. If you give me a second, you watch it sell for a second and I'll go get the package. I can't remember what it's called. These are really nice tea towels and they're real, they're just nice basic tea towels. And they're two pack of tea towels. I get these at Walmart in Anamosa. I got them at Walmart and they're just craft basics. And they're just nice kind of off-white tea towels. 
And um, the other ones that um, would be nice are Kimberbell makes these really nice white plain tea towels. Those would also be very nice, and they're a very nice quality towel as well. And those are on the website. But I got these at Walmart. These are just these are a little bit more on um, the uh, vintage looking. So I like I like these too. But I got the, I got these. They're hem. They're about eighteen by twenty eight. And then the Kimberbell ones are you get three in a pack, and they're white, and they're really nice towels too. They're a little heavier than these are. But this is just what I had at home. <laughs> I had to just grab, I was doing this over the weekend and I needed to um, get it done. So this is what I had at home. So you can buy tea towels a lot of different places. Kimberbell does have a lot of nice tea towels. Can we, no, I don't usually wash any of the towels first. I, do, I don't, Shannon, I don't, I just don't wash anything. Um, I'm usually in a hurry to get it done. So I never wash anything. You could. Um, the one thing when I make, um, I make recipe towels and they have a lot more words on them. So I have to do a little more stabilizer, a little more advanced stabilizer on those. Um, I do wash those after I sew them because I want them to look a little bit, a little bit um, vintage. So then they look a little bit wrinkly and they look really cool that way. Um, so it depends on the towel, but no, I've, I've washed these afterwards and they're usually fine. I, don't, I normally don't have time to wash them beforehand. But then I added the little the little uh, rickrack. I thought it was cute. I just had some basic rickrack. Oh, and I wanted to tell you too, um, oh, how big the piece of applique material was. This is about three inches by five inches. So I cut that. And you could just use plain fabric if you wanted, but the vinyl fuse I thought was really cool. On it. I just, I saw that and I thought, you know what, we need to have a shiny umbrella. So, all right. So yeah, so these are, these are the little Walmart ones that I got, but the Kimberbell towels would be really good. I wanted one of those, but I didn't have it. Why don't you iron on the embroidery area? If you want iron on the embroidery area, A, in this case, I have something, a product down here that could melt. So I don't want to, I don't want to melt that. And if you iron directly on your embroidery, it will it will bring so i never iron directly on the embroidery either on even from the back so i just kind of ironed around it but you can see how nice and flat it looks it's nice and flat i've been handling it so you can see my fingerprints but okay but yeah don't don't iron on your embroidery I do iron over some of my embroidery when I am doing like quilty stuff because it's got batting underneath of it, but I don't, I try not to iron directly on any embroidery. Um, if you have to, you could put a, a, it also causes the polyester thread to look shiny if you iron on it. Oh, you like green handle? I do too. I like lime green. I'm not a big green fan, but I like lime green, so. So we're, we're doing the word brains. So we're getting about done. But I just thought everybody needed a, a, a cute little design to have fun with. So you'll have to show me some, put some pictures up on uh, So Along With Jan or, or send them to me by email so we can see pictures of your spring showers or your April showers towels. I used to do years ago, and, and I did this a long time ago, I used to do um, a design of the month every month and this is one of the ones I did probably at least 10 years ago, but it didn't have, I, did, I redid it a little bit this weekend. Hey, I have some stabilizer you use. I am using the Dime, um, the Dime Light Tearaway. Um, Dime, Dime's medium tearaway is a little heavy. I like the light tearaway better. It's kind of, it's still kind of medium, but um, it is a little bit, uh, the, I like the light dime light tearaway or the Floriani medium tearaway. So depending on what you have, I, I, we have both on the website and in the store. So I use mostly um, those two kinds of tearaway or stabilizer. And then the rickrack looks great. Oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? I thought the rickrack was cute and it matched my handle. So I, it just needed to have a little bit something on the bottom because it was a plain towel. Okay. 
We're getting about done. This one, it took about 17 minutes to stitch out. So I knew that it was going to take a little bit. I kind of like the font that I chose for the letters. I See, I didn't have the letters on it. I just had the little, um, the original design just had the little umbrella. And I put April showers on the umbrella. So I redid it and I used the, the all the other pieces, but I, I made, I added these two little pieces to the umbrella and took the letters out and put them on up and up and down. <laughs> so I just wanted to make it a little different. So the other, the main part of the design is the same one that I did all those years ago. I love to digitize, it's so much fun. And if, you, if you've never tried, you can do so many fun, easy things. Like this was a very simple little thing I just drew all, off of a picture, this little applique. And then the lettering is in the software. And then I think I even drew the raindrops off the, the original um, little picture. And then I just duplicated them and, and then made them different sizes. So that was something really fun to do. And I learned to digitize a long time ago, and it just it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, so if you haven't thought about software, and if you like to do fun little simple projects, there's um, a couple things you can do. If you want to see if you like software, good way to get started. There's a really cute, a really cool um, product called Embroidery Tool Shed that Dime has, and Dime has a free version of that software where you can do some editing and stuff. And oh my gosh, it's such a wonderful little software. So if you don't have that, if you go to inspiredbydime.com, you can undownload Embroidery Toolshed and have free software to do some editing in. It gets you just gives you just a little bit of a feel for software and it's very user-friendly. Oh, after doing the Easter pillow, yeah, the Easter pillow was fun. I, that was one of my, I really enjoyed doing those pillows. I I need to make a few more of them, so. Okay, we're getting about done. We got ERS to go yet here. Maybe maybe Tim will come back and talk to you here in a minute. So we're just about done. So yeah, so, if, so that's a good way to try a little bit of software. If you've never tried it, you can get some free software. Then if you like it, you can buy, the, they have lots of different, levels of software dime does and they work on both the pc and the mac computer will it work with all brother machines yes it will yep the, the it's not on the machine it's on your computer um i teach a class every month in fact um sunday night will be a software class so if you're around sunday evening and want to kind of see an applique class um we're actually going to do an applique class um that's a little bit more advanced than this one um, and that'll be on Sunday night. Oh, here comes Tim. You ready to talk? I guess. I don't know what I'm It's just about done, so. All right. Last letter, everybody, and Tim's back. There we go. Okay. All done. Now, just so you know, when you have letters, this is another basic embroidery thing. When you have letters that are fairly close together like this, there will be jump clip, jumps in between the letters. And there are a few on this one that I'll, I'll clip. So then I'll remove the stabilizer, just like I showed you on the back of the other one. And then I will press it around the embroidery. And then I'm going to add my little piece of rickrack to the bottom. OK? All right, so Tim's back. Let's see if I can turn this around here. Whoops, what did everybody think of their little pillow or their little towel? Get the camera changed. Sorry, Tim. Get the camera changed back here. And the other one so we can hear you better. There we go. All right, I'm back. Um, <laughs> again, I don't have a whole lot to, uh, to add on to that. But uh, again, thanks for um, joining us today on uh, Shields Live. Again, reminder, next week we will not be here. So we will not be doing a Shields Live. We'll be back the following week. Um, but hopefully better weather is coming and maybe it'll bring, maybe there's all this rain, rain will bring the main flowers. But uh, again, thank, uh, thanks again. Share, like, uh, comment, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Have a great rest of your week.
Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you.